let's dive into the nuances of Option Vega. Now, Option Vega is one of the option Greeks, which traders use to predict or calculate the potential price movements in options based on changes in various factors. Now, Vega is the Greek that has to do with the changes in an option's volatility. And how does the options price change as the volatility changes? Now let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the specifics of Vega, it is essential for us to understand why Vega and volatility is such a crucial part of an options pricing. So volatility measures the risk or uncertainty that there is in the market. And as volatility relates to a specific stock, the volatility tells us how much does that stock's price fluctuate over a certain period of time. When volatility is high, it means that there is a greater chance that an option will expire with value. And that is why for both calls and puts, higher volatility will mean a higher price for the option. Now let's dive deeper into why higher volatility will lead to higher option prices. So higher volatility means that there is a greater probability for the underlying stock to have large price swings up or down. With that higher probability of these large price swings, that means that there is a higher chance of the stock price moving beyond the strike price. As a result, option sellers demand higher option premiums to compensate them for the higher risk they take when they write an option contract on a stock with higher volatility. Because this higher volatility means that it's more likely that this option will be exercised against them where they have to buy or sell an underlying stock at an unfavorable price. Now, this increased uncertainty leads to higher option prices. You can think of this higher volatility, meaning that there's greater uncertainty, which translates into higher option prices. There's one other concept I want to clarify before we get into Vega. And that is the concept of an option's extrinsic value. Now, the extrinsic value is the portion of an option's price that is determined by factors such as timed expiration and implied volatility. It is not the part of the option's price that comes from the difference between the strike price and the underlying assets price. We won't get too into that right now, but just understand that extrinsic value is closely related to Vega and we will discuss more detail on this later in the video. And now for the part you've all been waiting for, where we get to discussing Vega. Now, let's start off with the definition. Vega measures an option's sensitivity to implied volatility changes. It is often simplified and expressed as the change in an option's price for a 1% change in the implied volatility. As implied volatility increases, Vega increases, making the options price more sensitive to volatility changes. Now, remember, when I defined Vega, I said that Vega measures an options price sensitivity to changes in implied volatility. Let's talk about what does implied volatility mean. So when you think of the volatility of a stock historically, you're going to be thinking of, if we looked at all of the past data of a stock, and we measured the price fluctuations of that past data, that would be the historical volatility. That is not what we're talking about with Vega. Vega is based on implied volatility, which is the market's expectation of future volatility derived from options prices. So one measure is backward looking and the other measure is forward looking. And Black-Scholes option pricing model is based on the forward-looking estimates that the market implies for volatility in the future. Earlier, when I defined Vega, I said that it was often expressed as the change in an options price for a 1% change in the implied volatility of the underlying stock price. Now, if we look at this example, we can see that if we have an option with an original price of $2.50, and the option has a Vega of 20 cents, the new estimated option price will be $2.70 if there is a plus 1% increase in the implied volatility, 
Whereas if there is a minus 1% decrease in the implied volatility, we will estimate the new option price to be $2.30. In my last example, I may have oversimplified things a little bit because I said, hey, how is the options price going to change based on the changes in implied volatility? The thing is that implied volatility is derived from option prices. So changes in stock price can affect the implied volatility. So this is like a classic case of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Was there initially an egg that a chicken came out of? But where did the first egg come from? It must have come from a chicken. So you can think of it similar as that analogy. The way I like to think about it is, if I was trying to figure out the speed of an object, I could look at its distance covered and in a certain amount of time, and I could come up with an average speed. I could yet then use that average speed to predict future distances that that object might travel in the future. So although the implied volatility is derived from the stock price, we can use the implied volatility to predict stock price movements in the future. And Vega helps estimate option price changes based on that implied volatility. Think back to earlier when I defined extrinsic value. We said that extrinsic value was the component of an options price that comes from the volatility or the time to expiration of the stock. Now, let's apply that and look at an example where we have two options. Option A has an extrinsic value of $1, and option B has an extrinsic value of 50 cents. Both options have an implied volatility of 1%. Given this information, can we figure out these option vegas? Yes, we can. Because remember, option vega tells us how much does an option's price change for 1% change in implied volatility. Now, if a stock has 0% implied volatility, then its extrinsic value should be $0. So we can just look at the case of if we decrease the implied volatility by 1% for both of these options, they'll both have 0% implied volatility, and now they'll have a $0 ext extrinsic value. And we'll see that the Vega must have been a fall in the price of $1 for option A and a fall in the price of 50 cents for option B. But which options have the greatest extrinsic value and the greatest Vega? Typically, those would be the options with the greatest number of days to expiration, or in other words, the options with the longest time until they mature. And so if we look at this example that I have here, I have priced out the same option for a 365-day period. I've used the Black-Scholes option pricing model, so don't worry too much, but it has five inputs. I've kept four of them the same the entire one-year time period of this option, and you can see those four on the right. The one that I'm going to change is the time to expiration. And then you can see that... When we have 365 days to maturity, we have an extremely high Vega value of about 37. And then as this option moves closer and closer to expiration, it decreases and decreases. The rate of decrease is somewhat slow. But as we get to the, that last 92 days or so, we see this exponential fall off a cliff in the value of the Vega. Now, this is because as we approach expiration, this is decreasing the potential range of probabilities or potential stock prices that that underlying stock price can end up at. So as we get closer to expiration, that range just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually on the last day, Vega is basically going to revert to zero as the option expires. Now to further illustrate the point that options with more days to maturity will have higher Vega, I've conducted a pretty cool simulation using Python. Now you're going to see two animations on your screen. The one on the left side is for a stock with a certain volatility and it's going to be a call option with a strike price of $110 and 365 days to maturity. Now on the right side of your screen, you will see a call option on the same stock, same volatility, same everything. The only difference is that this option has a uh, 90 days to maturity. 
So for this option to expire in the money at the end of its life, the price needs to be in excess of the strike price, $110. Now you'll see the option with more days till expiration is going to have more time where the volatility, the Vega, can basically take the options price above $110. So the, the option on the stock of 365 days to maturity has a lot of different stim simulated price paths where the ending stock price exceeds $110, where the option with just 90 days to maturity has very few strike paths or price paths where the price exceeds 110 at the end. So this is why time is so important. And there's another Greek that is influenced by time, and that's theta. And if you're interested in my video explaining theta, you can click that right here. Now that you understand how time to expiration can really affect the value of an option and its extrinsic value and its vega, let's talk about how the strike price of an option can really affect the vega. On your screen, you're going to see a graph of options that everything is held constant. The volatility, the time to expiration, everything, except for the strike price. So along that x-axis, you'll see a whole bunch of different strike prices. And then marked by that dashed green line, you'll see the current stock price that this underlying this option. Now that stock price is $40. And you can see the Vega values at every single strike price. So when the strike price is nearest to the stock price, we call that an at the money option. That is when Vega is the highest. If we look out into the tails for more out of the money or in the money options, Vega becomes extremely low. This means that when the stock price is nearest to the strike price, changes in the volatility of the underlying stock will have the greatest impact on the price of the options. Now, why is that? Well, I like to think of it as like a seesaw, where when the option is at the money, the seesaw is perfectly balanced. Any small change in weight can tip the seesaw heavily into one direction or another. That would be like the at the money option. Whereas the seesaw is, if it's already tipped to one direction, any small change in weight is probably not going to change it to the other direction. And so this high Vega for at the money options reflects the probability of the uncertainty of whether this option will expire in or out of the money. At the money, there is so much uncertainty that small changes in volatility can greatly affect the price of the option. Thank you for watching the video and please make sure to like and subscribe for more content just like this and check out ryanoconnellfinance.com for any help with finance tutoring or financial modeling you may need. And for any more Greek option videos, you can click here or here.